Hi students, we are back with another topic on linear independence, dependence of vectors and bases. Let's first define what is linear independence and dependence of vectors. What if we are given a vector space, capital V, and a subset of V, S, which has the vectors V1, V2, Vn. This S is a subset of V. Now, the vectors in the subset S are said to be linearly independent if and only if, when we form a linear combination of these vectors and equate it to zero, this is only possible when all the coefficients are zero. If we cannot find such a linear combination, then they are said to be dependent. We sometimes say the subset S is linearly independent or dependent. So, what does it mean? For a layman, it means if the vectors are linearly independent, then one vector from the subset S cannot be expressed as a linear combination of other vectors in S. But if they are dependent, then we can do so. Few things which we should remember. If S has no vector or it's an empty set, then it is not linearly dependent. It will be called independent. If S has a single element, let's say the vector V, then it will be linearly dependent if and only if the vector is a zero vector. And third thing which we should know is that all the unit vectors, like the unit vector from R2, which we represent as ij, the unit vector from R3, which we represent as ijk, and the vectors, unit vectors E1, E2, En, etc. from Rn, they are all linearly independent. Let's do some examples. If S is a subset of R2 with just one element and one vector rather, which is 2, 3, then this vector can be expressed as a linear combination only by multiplying it by a scalar. Here, if the scalar is A, then the linear combination which is possible is A times 2, comma 3. If we equate this to 0, either A will be 0 or the vector 2, 3 will be 0. If A is 0, we know that set will be linearly independent. If the vector is 0, then it is linearly dependent. How do we test whether the subset is linear independent or dependent? First of all, we'll arrange all the vectors in columns and form a matrix. Let's call it A. Next, we reduce this matrix A to the row echelon form. If every column has a pivot, then the vectors are said to be linearly independent, otherwise they are dependent. Alternatively, if the RH, RF form in that rank of A is equal to the number of vectors, then the vectors are said to be linearly independent. So rank can be found in the RF form for A and vectors, how many vectors we have, we can see in the subset S. Let's take another example. Here we have a subset S from R3. If we perform the elementary row transformations, we'll first start by writing the vectors in columns. Then we will do the elementary row transformations. And we will see the final matrix in the row echelon form will be 1, minus 3, 3, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. We can see every column here has a pivot 1. And so the subset S is linearly independent. 
Let's take a subset of P2. Here we have three polynomials in S. If we want to find if the subset S is linearly independent or linearly dependent, we will first form the matrix A. We will write the coefficients of x square, then the coefficient of x and the constant term in columns. So in the first polynomial, the coefficient of x square is 1, the coefficient of x is minus 2 and the constant term is 1. So we write 1 minus 2, 1 in the column. We do the same with the second polynomial and the third. And after applying all the elementary row transformations, we get the final matrix as 1, 1, 1, 0, 3, 2, 0, 0, 2. This is the row echelon form. We can see that here every column has a pivot or we see the rank of this matrix is 3 and that is equal to the number of polynomials in our subset S. So these vectors are linearly independent or we say that S is linearly independent. Let's try another subset from M22, that is the set of all matrices of order 2 by 2. Here we will form the matrix A. How do we do that? Let's take the first matrix which has two rows, 1, 2 and minus 1, 5. We will take the first matrix, write its first row as a column in A. So in the first column, we first write 1, 2, and then we pick the second row and write that row just below 1 and 2. So our first column is formed. It is 1, 2, minus 1, 5. Same thing we do with the other two matrices. Now we have a matrix which when we reduce to the row echelon form, we will see that the final matrix is 1, 3, 2, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 5 by 8, 0, 0, 0. Here, sorry, the final matrix is 1, 3, 2, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, and the last row is zeros. Full row has zeros. So we can see that here also each column has a pivot, and so the subset S is linearly independent or in other words as the rank of this matrix A is 3 number of 3 non-zero rows are there and there are 3 matrices in our subset S so these vectors are said to be linearly 